My name is Judy and I'm the City Stitcher and welcome to my Floss Tube channel. Today is Sunday, March the 19th and I am recording this very, very late on Sunday. So I'm not exactly sure when it's going up because anyway, because I'm recording it really late. Um, it's been a nice sunshiny day today. Um, the temperatures are warming up. The forecast for this week has sort of like daytime hives highs all above um, zero degrees Celsius. So I feel like we're starting to turn the corner and getting into spring, but I don't really want to say that we really are because that's, you know, jinx and anywho. But I feel like, I feel like we're making some progress. Um, yeah. Anyway, so it's been a nice sunshiny day. Uh, the reason I'm recording this so late is um, because today is my dad's birthday. So, not surprisingly, there are a few other things in this schedule that had to be looked after. Um, but I can now report that my dad um, enjoyed his birthday present. So that's always positive. Um, I'm pretty sure I've told the story multiple times on this, on this channel, but um, I get my dad a 3D pop-up card for everything. So his birthday, Father's Day, Christmas, he gets a pop-up card. Um, so <laughs> sometimes my option, because you know, because you can't repeat, because he sa he saves them all. He saves them all. These are he has years, like he has a stack of cards for me because he saves all of them. Which don't get me wrong, I I enjoy it. Like he really does appreciate the cards. Um, <laughs> I feel badly you know for my other siblings because I don't think he saves every card that they, <laughs> that they would give him anyway uh, I like it's not like he goes here's Judy's cards and here's you know the anyway that it doesn't happen the the cards are are down are downstairs in his desk area and you know not everybody goes down there regularly but because I have asked him occasionally sometimes I've said like I need to go back and like can I can I look at the cards because I'm trying not to duplicate <laughs> And he hauls them out, but yeah. So he so he got his pop up card. I this the one for this one. I was like, I think it's gonna go over well, but you're just never sure. There are some that I've seen that. So I ordered them online. I've some that I've seen where I'm just like, wait, this is not gonna cut it. <laughs> There's sort of a level of intricacy that my dad likes. Anyway, so he enjoyed it. It was of uh, the. Um, the module uh, that was used to land on the moon, and complete with like a guy climbing down the ladder out of the, I'm calling it a module. Um, anyway, so it he, he did enjoy it. He did enjoy it. So he, he always looks at, it, the funny thing with dad is that he opens the card and then like for the next several minutes, I'm going anywhere from five to 10 minutes. There's a lot of opening the card and close, closing the card and looking at the angles and the tops and the <laughs> it's just he's just trying to work out how exactly how it's all working anyway so that went over well uh his main present was an enjoyable it's tickets to an event later this year and then I topped it off with some chocolate that he really enjoys um and it was really quite funny because it's uh, a brand of chocolate that um isn't isn't always available so I always have to be on the lookout to to get him something from this chocolate line it's a Canadian chocolate line and uh, so I gave him some for Christmas and apparently he has only recently like used that up he's eaten all of that and he was out so he was very grateful that, that I gave him more chocolates for his birthday he's like Whew, okay and I honestly think he looked at the chocolates and went okay, I think this is going to last me till Father's Day. <laughs> so there will need to be more chocolates for Father's Day. And my mother did say that he was very good and he did share. She did have a couple of pieces of, of his chocolates. Um, and I kind of looked at her and said, like, do you want them? She's like, no, but it was nice that he shared his favorite, you know, his favorite chocolates. And she, she's okay. She doesn't need them added to her birthday, which is next month. Anyway, so it was fairly entertaining. Everything went over well. That was great. Everything's going swimmingly well. So everything's fine. So I'm recording a lot later than I was expecting. 
Alrighty. Uh, let's get into questions from last week. Questions, topics. Oh yeah. Um, if you're a new viewer, thank you for stopping by and spending some time with me. And as always, if you're a returning viewer, thank you for coming back and catching up on my journey. This is a channel about cross stitch. And one other thing, we'll talk about that later. Um, <laughs> thank you to uh, the viewer who made the comment um, that they always enjoy a Judy movie. Thank you. Um, I, actually, when I read the comment, I kind of chuckled and went, like, I don't understand why these Hollywood people sort of go on and on about how long it takes to make a movie. Because, you know, sometimes I record one in, like, you know, every other week. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, the production value is a lot lower, and I totally get that, and I don't have to coordinate with anybody, but anyway, I just had a moment where it's like, okay, with those, you know, hour and a half things, anyway, not the right answer. Um, thank you to those of you for all of your suggestions about what to do with those little squares. Um, so I have a couple of ideas that I'm contemplating, and I haven't quite decided, so check back later, see if I actually, you know, act on act on those thoughts but um yeah I, I I appreciated the suggestions and I like I like the ones from some of you were just like I had this plan as you're holding it was like ooh yeah no 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 not quite and like what do you do with that one ivory one throws everything yes yes that's exactly it like I don't know where the ivory one came from but anyway um <laughs> D she had a really great comment. She's like, what have you done with the real Judy? Crocheting, stickers, containers for buttons. It's practically a, who are you? I know. I told you, things are going sideways. And we're going to talk about that later. Uh, Sarah. Sarah the Stitch and Mummy. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant brilliant suggestion so thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you she was responding to my discussion about you know I was debating getting one of those little sticker printer doohickey things but the sizes didn't quite exactly fit into my book and 27 other things and she went you know I'm frugal so you have access to a color printer right <laughs> which I do so the answer is um, so yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come up with a template with the exact size that I need, take pictures of the finishes, put them in. Now it's going to take me who knows how long to have as many finishes that will fit onto, you know, one sheet of paper. I'm not going to print them out individually. It's like until I have like a full page that's ready to print, nothing's happening. Um, so I am, uh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So just take the picture, put them into this little template, print it out when the page is full, and then just glue them into the thingy. Now she suggested using washi tape, which is, which is a great option. I'm just going to use the double-sided, um, I mean, it's just you, okay, all of you card makers know what I'm talking about. You know that, you know, the double-sided thing where you just like run it along the back of the thing and, you know, for card making. Yeah, it's a double-sided tape of some kind. It comes in a little roller thingy. That's what, I, so I have that in the house. So that's brilliant, brilliant. I read the comment and went, oh my goodness, that is the best answer yet. Saves everything. I don't need to buy extra little thingies. I've got the double-sided tape in the house. Just, yes, brilliant, 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 brilliant. Love it. So until I have a full page and can print it out, I can't do any stickering. So it's going to help save on the stickering front because I can't go too far down that rabbit hole because I need to come up with a full page of finishes, get them into the book, and then only those months that I've actually, you know, can I start stickering. So brilliant, brilliant suggestion. Loved it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Awesome. This is why I put the questions out to the people. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot one thing. Okay, hang on, let me just go grab one thing. Okay, uh, and I think I also forgot to um, 
write down who had the question, but somebody asked me if I could read the numbers uh, for my Temperature Quaker palette. So remember, it's, it's still on its board. Um, so I will read them off now and I will put them in the notes so that they are um, written down for posterity. Um, but this is, this, this is for the Temperature Quaker chart by Sarah the Stitch and Mommy available on Etsy. She's working on it right now. It's coming along lovely. I love how it's how hers is looking. Now, you'll notice that mine does not have, you know, yellows, oranges, and reds. So when we get to the summer months, mine is going to look different. But I'm I'm fine with my color palette. But I'm going to read them out. Um, because she said she had a hard time reading them or they were fuzzy and it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to read them. So working from darkest starting in the gray land and working my way up. Uh, the numbers are 317, 414, 415, 26, 28, 29, 161, 160, 159, 932, 931, 930, 38, 10, 597, 598, 38, 11, 369, 368, 367, uh, 605, 3806, 3805, 3804, and 3803. So those are the numbers. Like I say, they will also be written down in the notes section um, as well. Uh, Angie, made, <laughs> Angie made a comment. <laughs> She's like, so thank, thank you for showing the Stony Creek Bell Poles. Um, some of you may have gone out and shopped for some of them. You're welcome. Just don't forget the answer is if I'm inspiring you to uh, add things to your stash because of stitching that I've shown, that's totally fine because this is supposed to be a channel about cross stitching. Um, unlike, unlike certain viewers who I watch who also have plus tube channels who do other crafts that have put me down a rabbit hole, which we're gonna talk about later. All right, um, Angie, uh, Angie, you also had a comment that you hadn't been able to find the winter one because she was planning on working on the winter one for Advent, which sounds like a really great idea. Um, so I'll have a little look and see um, if I can't find one. To me, I think you're looking for one online, um, and I and I don't know where I don't know where you live either. Um, but if you have a local um, physical store, if they're ordering from Wichelt, um, they can probably get it in for you because um, they do stock Stony Creek stuff. Um, Hoffman, I don't think quite so much, but Wichelt, Wichelt has them. Um, so you can always check with that. If you've got a favorite physical store, they can probably bring it in for you, um, even if you're ordering remotely or whatever. Um, but again, since I don't know, <laughs> I as an international shopper, like when you look at some of the stores, yes, you just have to be careful about what you're, anyway, we're all, we're all aware of shipping charges and the shipping costs are going up. So as an international shipper, um, anywho. Uh, but yeah, if I find one that's readily available online, I'll, I'll let you know. All right. Okay. Um, the, the topic for this week is called Let's Talk Randomly. And it's done that because I don't have a specific topic to talk about, but I have a lot of, I have a lot of things to talk about. So I'm just gonna sprinkle them in randomly. So we're gonna get to the end of this video and there's not gonna be an explicit topic because hopefully we will have covered all of the random thoughts that I have been roaming around in my head for the last little bit. Um, so, coronation sal so i talked about that last week um i had to catch up with cheryl at stitching at the library and she's like yes we should be doing a coronation sal she agreed with my concept that we should just you know whether you're stitching something that's specifically rated related to the coronation of king charles the third or if you just want to stitch on something regal so you can we're going to do the coronation sal the hashtag is going to be hashtag coronation sal um i laughed because Neither Cheryl nor I have made final decisions about what we're going to be stitching on. 
you know, we've got time. He's, his coronation is going to be on uh, Saturday, the May the 6th, which is, so that's the day that we'll be stitching for coronation, Sal. Um, she hasn't decided and neither have I. And Rachel Q, fabulous Rachel Q, uh, came on and posted a comment um, that Helen Phillips has now designed a pillow similar to the the one that I've already stitched and the one that I'm currently working on for Queen Elizabeth. So I've got the Queen Elizabeth Platinum Jubilee pillow and I'm working on the Queen Elizabeth II keepsake pillow. She's now come out with one for King Charles's coronation, which I'm probably going to buy. I don't know that that's what I'm going to stitch on for the coronation cell and here's why. And you're all going to chuckle, so just get ready. My problem, I can't work on that one on the day of the coronation cell because I feel like there's going to be a King Charles III coronation tea tin. Right, so I've got the two tea tins, you know, for my Queen Elizabeth pillows, for the Helen Phillips on Etsy pillows that I'm working on. I've got those two tea tins. I feel like there's going to be a tea tin for King Charles coronation and I'm going to need to get that. Here's the problem. I feel like the tin is going to be red. I can't tell you why I think it's going to be red, but in my head I think it's going to be red, which means I feel like I might have to bump up the red quotient in the Helen Phillips a design to go with the tea tin that I don't know will even exist. You know this is how I think. Anyway, so I'm probably going to buy, I'm probably going to buy the chart, but I can't work on it until after I find out if there's a tea tin for the coronation, right? Makes perfect logical sense. We're, we're all good on that, right? And the tea tin has to show up at my local winners or home sense because, you know, I like paying seven or eight dollars for those tea tins as opposed to the twenty to thirty dollars that you can find them on Amazon, because that's not happening anyway. All right, there were a few other comments on a couple of topics, and we're going to talk about them when we get to a different segment, and you'll know why we talk about it when we get there. But as always, thank you so much for the comments. Enjoy them. Love the conversation. With that, let's get into stitching. All right. So what have I worked on this last week? Well, as always on Sundays, I'm still working uh, on my ABC uh, piece for this week, which is the Little House Needleworks Spring ABCs. This is what it's going to look like. Sorry, I still need to juggle a few things. Uh, so I am stitching this on a 30, no, I'm stitching this on a 28 count star sapphire jobelin. Um, so here's where it is. I've had to, you know, you're, you don't get to see A anymore cause you know, we're getting, we're getting down into the bottom half of the alphabet. So what did I accomplish, uh, last Sunday? As you can tell, so I got OPQR because that's all my variegated, and then I did a little bit of the bird. Why did I do OPQR? Is because while I had the variegated thread out, I I just went. Technically, according to um, the calendar, to be on track for my getting one letter done a week, I need to be complete up to L. So I'm on track. All of this, I am ahead of schedule. Now, there's not going to be a lot of stitching time today, which is going to be a little bit of a problem. Well, anyway, we'll work it out. Um, my aunt, hopefully I'm going to finish up the bird and the bird's nest, but I may stray and do this a little bit on Monday just to, you know, keep it moving along. But yeah, there's my really pleased with how this is coming along. And what I have decided is I have... Um, I really like that I used a variegated for these letters. So this is the, um, the called for in the chart, like these, 
All of these letters would have been the solid green is what's called for, but I'm very, I'm very happy with my variegated thread that I used for that. And so I'm thinking for um, spring and autumn that I should do a variegated for those ones as well. So I'm gonna put this out to the lovely community. Um, if you run across a variegated cotton thread, so I do want it to be cottons. If you come across a variegated cotton thread that you go, this is really summer colors, that you sort of go, um, don't forget I'm a not, not so much yellow. I was, um, I was out at Traditional Stitches this weekend and I was talking to Kathleen from Traditional Stitches and I told her my problem and she, she looked, we were looking at the Threadworks ball and she said like, this just says summer to me and I'm like, oh, it's very yellow. And she said, yeah, but it's, it's good for me. <laughs> like, I know, but we're looking for me. <laughs> she just laughed. Anyway, so if you stumble across one that you go like, this is a really good, where you look at it and you go, I think summer, but it's not too yellow. Quite frankly, probably doesn't have any yellow in that. Um, let me know. You can let me know randomly. Like it doesn't have to be on this video. Just randomly, if you if you stumble across a variegated cotton that you think would work for that, just throw it in the comment section. That would be awesome. As well as one for autumn. Anyway, just throwing that out there because I'm now thinking that um, now for winter, I don't need a variegated. That's what I'm saying at this point in time. I don't need a variegated, but for summer and autumn, I think I'm going to need a variegated. Anyway, so there's that one. It's coming along well. Yes, juggle, juggle, juggle. Okay. So then we, of course, uh, did a lot of Lent stitching this week. We're doing not too badly on that one. So I'm working on the Spring Bell Pull um, by Stony Creek, which is from the February 2006 magazine. If you have the magazines, it has also been released as a leaflet. It is leaflet 155. This is what it's going to look like when, it's, when the stitching is complete. And I did okay this week. I had to put it on the big board. It's not all gonna fit. It's not all gonna fit in. It's, so SPR. Um, so R. I don't remember where we were on R last week. I feel like something had to be. I don't remember where we were on R, but uh, certainly the back stitching on the, on the butterfly needed to be done. There were there were other things that needed to be completed, but there is my completed R. I, I think it's lovely, 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 lovely. I got started on I, it's coming along not too badly. I've got about 350 stitches left, plus again, back stitching on uh, the butterfly. So I feel like I'm in a decent position that I will be able to have this completed um, probably by Tuesday. So I'm still on track. Like my, for me, the demarcation of a week in Lent is Wednesdays because you start with Ash Wednesday. Um, so I, I feel like we're still on track. There's only two letters left to go. But I will say, man, this is a big stitch. So my, don't get me wrong, my Jerusalem, which I started two years ago and isn't anywhere close to being completed, um, that's that's a really big stitch. Stitch. That's a that's a bap for sure. Um, now I knew when I started this Lent project that it was for me it was going to be a little aggressive and it was going to be interesting to see if I was going to be able to get it accomplished. So I do think I'm going to be able to get it accomplished, but I am getting to that point where I'm like, I'm a little bit I'm tired of working on this. But I say to myself, it's like really, you have to finish I and two weeks two weeks more and you will have this entire project complete. You can, you can be brave. You can stick this out. Um, it was a really good thing where it also said it just kind of reminds like just how long Lent is. 
um, you know, the 40 days of Lent, if, you, if you're doing it properly, which Vonna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher, is doing. Um, she does Lent properly. I do Lent not quite properly because I include the days that don't count towards the 40. Anyway, you can look up Lent and how it gets done and all the things. Because Lent for me is really 47 days. Anyway, I know a lot about Lent. Anyway, here's the Lent stitch. It's it's progressing. I love how it's looking. I don't know. Yeah. SPRI, two letters left to go. It's making, yeah, great progress. And I love when they're complete. Like just looking at the at the completed ones. Like they're just lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So I'm re I'm really glad that I've pulled it out for Lent. I'm really glad that I'm making progress. I'm thrilled that I am on track to actually having it completed during the season of Lent, which is even more important. Um, that's awesome. Uh, anyway, I sometimes have those ones like, oh, I need to pull out Spring Bell Pull and work on it. And sometimes I avoid it a little bit, which causes another complication, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. But it is progressing. We're still mostly on track. It's like, like I said, I'm fairly confident that this is still going to be complete, um, you know, by Tuesday. Uh, so that worst case scenario on Wednesday, we'll be starting on N. N is a big stitch. It is the the second largest number of stitches. So I'll need to make sure that I'm very diligent uh, about working on that and getting my um, daily stitch count in so that we can stay on track with that. So yeah, like I love I love the project. I love how it's looking. I'm getting a little tired of of working on it, but. Like every time I finish a block, I go, oh, isn't that lovely? Anyway, that's my problem. Alrighty. But it does say like next, <laughs> next week, it's not good. It's not going to fit on the board anymore. All right. And then I did um, a reasonably good job uh, this week of working on my uh, March Quaker. So this is my monthly Quaker, which I'm really, really behind on. I'm not sure it's going to get completed in the month of March. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. This is not life-saving medication. It'll be fine. If March carries over into April, it will be fine. But I did make progress on this. So there I am. Um, oh, yeah. Hang on. Spring Bell Pole. I am stitching on the called for 28 count plum Shenandoah linen um, by Zweigart, which has been discontinued. I am also using all of the called for threads other than I have adjusted the yellows and made them paler. And the yellows that I am using will are in the notes section down below if you're looking for that adjustment. All right, back to the March Quaker which I'm stitching on a 40 count white Verdal um, using so far the called for classic color works threads. I will say when I was working, so my, what I'm trying to do is one length of thread every day, which has a funny effect <clears throat> and it, you know, I shouldn't be surprised at this, right? One thread length, they're all the same length. Now, not surprisingly, so I started in the center and I was working, you know, so one length of thread for me did one of these um, leaf circles, right? So not surprisingly, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, like my stitch count on this piece was exactly the same because these are identical. The funny thing is when you get down to these other motifs, so the, the urn and this motif over here, the stitch counts are almost identical. They're within a couple. They're within a couple of stitches of each other, which. Anyway, I got to the end. I went, "Huh, isn't that interesting?" Anyway, um, the other thing that's interesting is I was sort of debating. Sort of, it's like it's a little. Um, 
it's a when I stitch it up it's a little more olivey than I was thinking it was gonna look like I'm like yeah I don't have the threads for that handy um, they're over there and I'm not going that far to get it um, that I would probably if I were doing this again because at this point there mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'm not do repeating the 650 stitches of the dark green that I've already got in there. That That's not happening. I'm already behind, so I'm not taking anything out and restitching it. If I were doing it again, I would pro... Because again, this is my color palette. I would probably choose a dark green that it was a little less olivey and a little more towards like the forest greeny. Um but I've got 650 stitches in in that color and we are not going back and taking it out and redoing it so it's it's okay like it's it's not bad you know again standing back from it it's totally fine just because I know that there's at least one of you out there who's contemplating working these and again it's my color palette do whatever works for you but if it were me I probably would have made it into a more of a forest green if I were doing it again the interesting thing is I'm now at that point where the third color, which I really am having a debate about, needs to be decided. And I've got a couple of greens with the project to make my assessment. So uh, next week when you see this, I will have had to have made a decision. But I am having a debate about what the, what the lightest of the green colors is going to be. I don't think it's going to be the called for, but stay tuned on that front. So I'm still going to continue trying to get in um, one length of thread every day, although it's not going to get a length of thread on Sunday, that's for sure. Um, I know there's only uh, 11 days left this month, and I've got I've got a lot left to go. So a little unfortunate on that front. Then of course we had stitching at the library. Um, So I have my stitching at the library piece, which I will confess um, after doing errands and running around and all that kind of stuff, um, I did come home and do a little bit more work on it because I just need it to move a little faster than I don't get. Um, although I'm at the library for three hours, it will come as a great surprise to many of you, I'm sure, that there's a lot of talking going on. <laughs> and I get distracted by the talking and the things that we do. You know, it was it for me, it was actually one of my better stitching at the library episodes because I actually did, you know, some stitching. <laughs> there are some stitching at the libraries where I think my stitch count is like maybe, you know, 10, 20, 25 stitches over a three hour period. So anyway, uh, so I did not bad. Um, so what I'm using uh, currently for my stitching at the library is Deb's Winter Biscornu. So I'm stitching this for the second time. Uh, this is out of the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Magazine Winter uh, 2021 um, magazine. Um, I stitched this for the Smalls Exchange for StitchCon. It was my first Biscornu and I really loved how it looked. So I stitched one up and I gave it away and said, well, now you need to stitch it again for yourself. So I'm, I'm working on that now. Uh, so I got this light blue part up here. Now this is not complete, but while we were at the library, I'm like, there were a little, there's a little bit here and a little bit here. And I'm just like, I just wanted to stitch in, you know, more bulkish stitching which was this. So I got started on this snowflake, but I did not finish it at the library. I came home and finished that off just because I wanted to make more progress on this than just stitching at the library is going to allow me. So I worked on it there. Um, yeah, I am stitching this on a 28 count white opalescent Lugana. My plan for the stitching at the library was that I was going to work on one piece until it was complete. And I'm adjusting that because at the rate I'm going, it's going to take me until like the summer to finish this. And I'm not necessarily going to want to stitch on this in the summer. Um, 
So I've decided I'm going to stitch on this for April stitching at the library, which I do have the date for, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but then come May, I'm going to switch to a different stitching at the library project just because I'm going to want to work on something different over the summer months. We'll see how, how that goes. Um, but it will come back out because I do want, I love, so this is only side one. This is side two. No stitching. So I'm a long, long, long way away from completing this. But yes, I want to finish this because I want to have my own Biscornu. I stitched one and I gave it away, but I want my own. So anyway, so there is my uh, library stitching for this month. Yes. All right. And that... Just looking at it, yes. That's my stitching for this week. Um, let's talk some stash quisitions. Because like I said, I did go to traditional stitches. There's going to be bag wrestling. Um, just because I need to keep some of these things organized. You know, you'd think I would have pulled it out, but if I pulled it out, then I wouldn't be organized. All right. Here we go. Floss tube, itchy nose. Okay, so what did I pick up? I've also got categories. So I picked up, uh, this is uh, Gentle Arts Old Red Paint. I picked up two skeins. This is a color that I need for Blackbird Designs um, Raise a Glass of Cheer. Uh, so this is a color I did not have in my stash, so I got the two skeins of that so it can go with that project. That project is not in the five-year plan. doesn't matter. I was, I was kidding it up. I know I said I was kidding up things that are in the plan. Sometimes I'm kidding up things that are not in the plan. It's me. You know things don't go according to plan, even though I have a plan. Plan, 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 but adjust. Um, I also picked up this. This is Threadworks uh, 11585. I have concepts for how this is going to be used. Um, and the problem is, of course, that we were... Kathleen and I were standing at the Threadworks wall or section of the wall that had the Threadworks fibers and I went, ooh, that, mm. anyway. I'm pretty sure I know how I can use this. So I bought one. I debated getting two. Um, they had more than one. I only walked out with one because the answer was I can always call back into the shop and go, can you set one aside for me? <laughs> okay. I picked up two skeins of Soie d'Alger Blanc. Um, and I needed these for a couple of reasons. So one, I need this color for Remember 911. And when I was working on Remember 911, I ran out and I thought I had one in stash, but I didn't. So I actually had to steal this, this skein from a different project that has been kitted up to use for Remember 911. So I got two because I've got one to go to replace the one that I stole out of a project and one to go into stash. So I think I'm okay now. I picked up some uh, Magnifica beads because they're being discontinued. You're not gonna be able to find them. And I had to pick up these ones because <laughs> this is the color of Magnifica beads that I used when I did um, the Biscornu. So this is the, the color of beads that I used for this. And I looked at what I had left over from the first one and I went, I don't think I'm going to have enough to do another beaded edging. And since they had them in stock, I got two. So I think we're good to go on that. While I was there, because I know, you know, whatever you, s my understanding is really whatever you see of the Delica is really what there is, or not Delica, Magnifica beads from Mill Hill. What you see is what there are because they really are being discontinued and you won't be able to get them. 
so I couldn't help myself. I was standing looking at the Delica, the Delica, the Magnifica section. I went, so I just added a couple more silver and sort of the steely gray. You know, those are in my, my color palette ranges. Not for anything specific, but just because they're available. I picked up um, the skein of Krynic Braid. Um, this is for Bellatrix by Bella Filipina. And everything else is um, a Nashville item, an inadvertent Nashville item. Okay, true confessions time. I had said that I was planning on not putting in a Nashville order, which I actually was very successful at um, right up until Nashville market occurred. Post market, I did put in an order for one item. Uh, there was a chart. I actually, I hadn't seen it on, you know, cause I, I look at multiple sites for market and all that kind of stuff. Traditional was really the only one that I had seen it. I ordered it from them. They didn't bring enough back. They're ordering it for me. It should be coming in April. We'll talk about it when it comes in. Um, but I post market ended up putting in an order for a market item, true confession. But while I was at traditional stitches, cause they're back from market, they had things from market. And I had watched the traditional stitches um, floss tube about, uh, you know, sort of post Nashville and what they brought back. So there were a couple of things that I got while I was there. So running, running with scissors had a kit uh, to do these uh, where you would stitch the letters to make the word stitch and then you put them on the self-covering button thingies and then you put them on a rack. I did not buy the kit. I have other things in, in mind for this, but I did want the rack. So I got the rack. Actually, I was looking for it. No, it goes this way. There's a, there's a lip on one of them so you know which way it goes. Um, this was five dollars Canadian if I had ordered this from anybody else in the US shipping would have been egregious so I'm really really grateful that they brought some of these back I had not pre-ordered this um, I just picked it up because there it was there in in the store so I was like oh thank heavens so I got the rack and on their floss tube they had talked about that they had the buttons in stock so the the buttons that you cover were not part of the kit and so they brought them in. So I got the buttons. These, I can probably get these cheaper on Amazon. I didn't care. They had a couple of packages. I picked them up. So now I have the buttons to go on my rack for which I will be doing other things with. But I got them because they were there. And then, um, I picked up some fabric. Because I can't help myself. Um, they had showed on, so on the traditional stitches floss tube, they had showed um, the fabrics they had um, brought back from Atomic Ranch. And they said they had brought them back in Ada's, Lugana's, and Linen's. Now, I'm a Lugana preferred stitcher. So I was very excited. Um, there are certainly some dyers out there where they only dye Ada and Linen. And we all know that color trumps lots of other things. But if they bring it in in Ada, that's, if they bring it in Lugana, that's awesome. So I looked at, there were four colors in this set from Atomic Ranch. Um, there was a green, a pink, a purple, and a yellow. And I looked at three out of the four, because you know I didn't look at the yellow. <laughs> Um, looked at them all. They had them all in 32 count, which is my preferred. I only came back with the lavender. It's getting blown up because I do have the ring light on. I'm trying to figure out. I don't think I have anything here to, that will better show it. But So I did get the lavender. It's called, or lilac. It's called morning lilac. So I picked up a fat quarter of that. A 
then you have to wait while they go back in the bags because otherwise it's going to be a problem. And then I picked up a piece of 32 count Lugana by Fabrics by Stephanie. Uh, this is Polar Plunge. Now, I think this is the called for fabric for that new series by Hands on Design that has the Arctic animals. Um, I won't be stitching the Hands on Design, but they had the fabric in the shop and it's blue. And you know I have a problem with blue. So while it was there, while it was available, I picked up a fat quarter of that. It's looking a little more blue on camera um, in daylight. Um, this is heading towards, it is a little more aqua. Um, but like I say, it was a problem because it was available. It was there in the shop, ready to go. So I picked up a fat quarter of that. It was a Lugana in 32 count. So that came home. And you'll laugh at this next piece. This is also by Fabrics by Stephanie. This is a 28 count Lugana. This is lilac. I know. Yes, I picked up two pieces of purple fabric. Um, this one's back in its bag, but you know, clearly they're tonally different. This is Morning Lilac by Atomic Ranch. This is Lilac by Fabrics by Stephanie. Um, but it was lovely and it was available and I picked it up for the stash. No concrete plans for them, but you know. I looked at a number of things. I, I restrained myself. I only walked out with the three pieces of fabric. Anyway. All right, so those are my stash acquisitions from Traditional Stitches. Okay, just looking around. Okay, so our next section is the new section that we are having to add to my floss tube channel because of Cheryl. So I've decided that we're just gonna call it Cheryl's section there's stash acquisitions, there's the stitching section, there's the plans, and then there's the Cheryl section of my floss tube channel, which is about crocheting. Uh, so I will say that Cheryl was at stitching at the library and I did say straight up to her face that she is a terrible, horrible, very bad, no good influencer and she has absolutely sent me down a terrible rabbit hole and the things that she has done to me and she looked at me and she smiled serenely and said, you're welcome. Anyway, she's not repentant in the least. Cheryl. <laughs> and that's going to be said that way for quite some time. She doesn't care that I'm blaming her for my current project, plus my next two, plus the temperature blanket. And only then... Will I maybe change my tone when I say Cheryl? And by the way, she just laughs. Um, she did want to, uh, she did tell me that she, so the funny thing is, because I've been using her name in vain, and I will say, I did warn her in advance that I was planning on using her name in vain. On Saturday, I told her I was going to be using her name all over again, and she just laughed at me. Anyway, not repentant in the slightest. Um, she did want to say she, re so she, <laughs> the funny thing is, so she reads through my comments. What a username and faint. She reads through my comments as well. <laughs> She's looking for her name. She really enjoyed the, the, the person who said naughty, naughty Cheryl. And she giggled because she said, I haven't been called naughty in quite a while. Really enjoyed the comment. So from, from Cheryl to, uh, whoever of you that was that called her naughty, I think it was Carol. Um, thank you. She really enjoyed that. And she's not repentant in the slightest. Okay, let's talk temperature blanket. Um, so, Rachel, uh, thank you for your comment because she was sort of she likes the granny square ones because you can do um, uh, a high and a low for every day, and 
while I like the concept of the high and the low, um, there's no way I'm doing granny squares because that means you have to attach them and, and no, 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 no. I'm in like the, the blanket, the shirt, like I just need to be able to crochet across back and forth and back and forth. I am, I don't necessarily want to be joining things. A granny square temperature blanket. I'm like, oh, wait, mm, mm, no, no. I did see one where it's like, it's only 12, 12 squares. You do one large square every month and you just have to join those. And even then I was like, I like the concept, but I don't want to join them. And I know I'm being a wuss, but whatever. But the problem is, is it, you know, cause I'm down the rabbit hole badly. Uh, I did, something came up on it and I will fully confess, I don't remember how I stumbled across this, but it is brilliant. And I have wasted a good, a decent amount of chunk over the past week looking at this website. So, um, caution, if you don't really want to know, you're going to have to skip ahead about like five minutes if you don't want to go down the rabbit hole with me. If you are a knitter or a crocheter and you are interested in a temperature blanket, I found this brilliant website. And wait for it. It's called uh, www.temperature-blanket.com. Yes, there's a website for everything. It is brilliant, 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 brilliant. So you go into this website you put in your location and you set your time frame. Now it's all historical. I know it will come as a great surprise to many of you that you can't go into this website and see forward looking information about weather in your area. Although if they can get that programmed in, that would be awesome. It's all historical related, but I like the context because it means I can go back. It's like if I had done one in 2022, what would the blanket have looked like? If I had done one in 2021, what would the blanket have looked like? It's great. So then what happens? So you go in and you set your location. So you can look at it specifically for your area. It's not generic because you can go in and say like, type in where you are, it will come in. It will go and it will get all of the data for you. All of the data. High, the high temperature, the low temperature, the average temperature, and I think the, the precipitation levels by day. I'm like, I didn't know that we were adding precipitation into temperature blankets, but I'm don't don't send me down the rabbit hole of that one. But it, it gets all the data for you. And then you've got the ability to go in and choose your color palette yarn colors. So you can go in and okay, so I um, okay. I'm talking about this and I, I knew I was gonna end up having to do this. Once my, you know, iPad opens. Okay. I know. Okay, so here's here's the example, like right. So I, I oh, this is not going to show up well, right? So I've plugged in the thing. It's got all the, all the data. We don't care about the data. Um, but then step two of three, you come in and you choose your palette, and you can be very very specific. If you click on choose colorways, it comes up with this list of. Um, all these different yarn brands of yarn and you know different weights and 27 other things and like you can be incredibly specific um so the specific yarn that uh, cheryl is using for her blanket is not actually in this so it has a lot but not all not surprisingly um but it does allow you to go in and sort of say okay 
pick a palette and then at the end um, actually let me get out of this so let's so we're gonna we're gonna just use this palette that comes out which is I would never use this one but okay just a quick reminder so there's there's what you know the gist of the gist of the palette looks like then it says choose the choose the design of your blanket so whether it's a, a horizontal vertical diagonal squares you know you've got you've got these options and then uh, you can choose whether you're going to use the high temperature the average temperature or the low temperature and then you can also choose whether um, so I have seen yeah because rabbit hole I have seen ones where they actually do half the row is the low temperature and half the row is the high temperature so you sort of get this divided um, uh, this the blanket has two two colors in every row to represent the high and the low because I'm only doing the ones that are going straight across but it looked interesting but anyway this one is the entire row length and then it shows you based on that palette what your blanket would have looked like so again this is not a color palette that I would have ever used because well mm, mm, very very yellow and orangey and all that kind of stuff um, but I did have a color palette in mind you know very similar to the one that I've got for the temperature Quaker pattern and I sort of plugged that in and looked at my blanket and went oh 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 mm, I'm not sure about that mm. it ended up being too pink <laughs> which would work out well for Cheryl but it didn't work out well for me because I'm like it's a little too pink and it was great because I looked at it and I went, oh, I don't, I don't know about that. And um, so anyway, so I'm not doing a temperature blanket this year. Probably isn't going to happen until next year. But it was really, really great because I looked at my color, at my concept of a color palette and went, oh, no, you're going to need to change that. Actually, now that I'm talking about that, um, I think it's because I stumbled across somebody had a post about uh, things that they learned you know like lessons I learned from from knitting or crocheting a temperature blanket and I went "Ooh, I like lessons learned <laughs> so it's really funny because she had she started a temperature blanket and by like the middle of February she was like I I'm not happy and so then she restarted her blanket changed her um, changed her color palette and then I think in the summer she changed her palette again um, which is always like finding this website that says this is what your thing would look like so the other thing that this website has allowed me to do is because um, it's me and there's nothing like a good spreadsheet <laughs> behind the scenes so I actually went in and I because um, it when you've got your color palette it tells you how many days would be in each of those colors and so I being me have gone back and looked at you know five or six years of data for my location and I've downloaded you know based on where I thought the gradations of color would be how many days are occurring in that and I've now come to the conclusion that I would need to do like so when you go in you could you can do custom gradations and all that kind of stuff like you know I want everything by four degrees or two degrees or ten degrees whether it's Celsius or Fahrenheit or like there's a lot of flexibility in this site it's great but I downloaded the data and I was like going hmm see I've got colors in my palette and consistently you know over the course of the past five or six years that color would get used for anywhere between two and four rows and I'm like what's the point in that so I've now come to the conclusion that I need to do a custom range that it's not um, like you know every five degrees or every four degrees or like it's not going to be like that there's going to be a few ranges which they're going to be a little wider and that some that I may like it's going to be a, 
yeah, what I'm, it's going to be a custom range where I'm going to decide by color how wide that range needs to be based on historical data to sort of say to come out with a palette that I think will work for me. So yes, Cheryl. Cheryl's also saying she's loving her temperature blanket. I know she's got a new video that came up on Friday and I've not made it through it. So I can't wait to go back and look at that one because I want to see how the blanket's coming along. She loves working on her blanket. And we talked about this at Stitching at the Library. And she's like, so somebody had said to her, like, okay, well, now that you've stitched one, you would never do another one. And she's like, oh, no, I would do another one. I love working on this. Like, it's the first thing she does when she gets up. And she just loves working on this blanket, which is a problem, Cheryl. Is it... I don't know that I will do mine first thing in the morning because I'm not necessarily a morning person. But anyway, unfortunately, she's really enjoying it and she's taking me down the rabbit hole. Um, but she's like, she would do another one and she can donate it to, you know, one of the charity things that she makes things for. And she's like, oh no, I would do another one. She's like, you could do one for like a baby blanket and have it just make your palette just really soft colors and any so now she's looking so she's now written so I showed her the temperature blanket website she was looking at it what she does with it it will be interesting to see if you want the rabbit hole of a temperature blanket temperature-blanket.com it's a great site it's a great site I love it it's a problem all right. Okay. So the next thing in the Cheryl section of the video is I had said to myself last week that I really needed to put the crocheting away so that I could focus on getting my Lent stitching. But the problem was, is I was doing a couple of things and I was listening to something and I was kind of needing to listen and not, not count. Like on a Stony Creek, you need to be like counting on the March Quaker. Like I need to be making sure I'm doing things the right way. So I had a few things where like I was listening to and I just sat on the couch and crocheted. So the blanket has made progress since last week. And there's probably going to be progress on the blanket this week. And we've had another problem come to the fore. So I decided I needed a better way of how I was stashing the yarn for this. I was trying, I was not going to go out and buy anything. But I was down in the basement. <laughs> anyway, looked at the luggage area and went, hmm, I have these, like I have a couple of these weekender bags. Like, you know, this one. And I looked at that and I went, oh, I'll bet that would hold the yarn for the lap gown that I'm working on. And it does. So I have now, it's hard to, hard to see, but there's my, you know, there's my yarn in my new container. And here is my blanket. There we go. That's better. It's bigger than it was last time, people. Anyway, I'm working on my blanket. I like my blanket. I would say it's half. It's halfway done now. It's about halfway. So take this and. And in the in the vertical length, one more of these and it'll be fine. So here's the problem. It's not that it's a problem. <laughs> I didn't haul this out. So last time I showed you a um, a skein of of yarn, the the variegated that I'm using on this, and you know it was looking a little flimsy. So really, when I was sitting on the couch and I was like crocheting I was like well I'm, I'm just gonna finish off this skein of yarn and just like that'll be the end of the crocheting till I finish the lint stitching well I was running out of the yarn 
midway through a row and like that just didn't seem right so then I added I I joined up the next the next skein of yarn and anyway so this is uh, I, I'm calling it a skein it's not because it's not a ball but anyway the next package of yarn feels weird um, so I started on that one want to see how how ball number two is looking look at the, I'm almost through ball number two now there's no worries because as I said I went back I had gone back to the store so like you know I anyway enjoying crocheting I don't know what's happening to me crocheting stickers buttons I don't know who I'm becoming anymore anyway I'm, I'm enjoying it it's anyway I yeah Ugh. any anyway so there's my there's my lap gown so far it's gonna be lovely at the end Anyway, so the Cheryl section of the program has its own stash acquisition section. It's a problem, Cheryl. Anywho, so the problem is, is that, you know, you stumble across things and, you know, although that temperature blanket website was just brilliant. I really enjoyed falling down that rabbit hole. But I found this pattern. I loved it. Loved it. So I had to go and get the wool for that. Here's the combination. In case you're wondering, this is navy. It's looking fairly blackish, but it, it is navy. Navy is not the called for color in the design. The called for color is a is charcoal, so it's really two grays. But I went charcoal and it's close enough. I'm a navy girl, so the navy came in. So here are my now. It this design takes more than four balls, so I bought all the things that I needed. Now, fortunately, at my so this is all from Michaels. Michaels is having a big yarn sale on right now, so ev everything I got was on sale. The problem is, is that I, like I'm just dying to. St I started a little bit. I don't think this is the right dimensions, but I just wanted to see. You know, th they are clear on this one that you do need to sort of do like your your gauge swatch. So this is my the beginning of a gauge Cheryl. So. That weekender bag, I have two of them. So one is for the lap gan. <laughs> I have I didn't bring it over. The other one is over there. It has all of the wool yarn for this this particular project is in that one. Ready to go. It bumped the other one. Like it, sure. All right. Okay, so the last little bits are announcements. Um, so I have the next stitching at the library booked. It's going to be April 15th from 9.30 to 12.30 at the Signal Hill Library. Um, I had sent out an email to the people that are on my email distribution list for the library stitching um, about some preferences and actually quite a lot of, I was sort of, originally I'd set up was like you know if we did it on Saturday morning it left you like the rest of the day to you know deal with family things and errand running and whatever um a lot of people came back and sort of said like they were actually really you know amenable to an afternoon session we did one we did one in January um so I will um so I am keeping that option available um right now um, when I go in to book the library, the afternoons are booked. I can, 
not fully booked, but the earliest I could get uh, a booking at the library would be at 3.30, which means I could only book the library for an hour, which is not, that's not, I don't think that's a long enough period of time. Uh, so right now we're still doing it in the mornings. Um, I am going to try to have a little bit of a discussion with the library staff to see if, um, so I'm thinking, um, cause I don't know, I don't, I don't have the ability to see who has it booked the rest of the time. So I don't know if it's a library program, but I am going to, uh, talk to the staff at some point here, particularly as we get into the fall, um, to see if we can't get if we can't get it set up that I can you know regularly get a Saturday without me having to sort of scramble every because um, I can only book 30 days in advance and 27 other things to see if we can't get this scheduled we'll, we'll see what they say um, you know clearly this is not a library sponsored um, booking but you know they might be amenable to that never hurts to ask um, so I'll look into that um, starting in September is is where I'm going to try to see if I can't get the afternoons booked. Um, I did have a friend who say like, well, you know, once once we get sort of past the school season that then there might be a little more flexibility because maybe there won't be as many programs running on a Saturday. Um, but my issue was is that it'll be summer and it'll be a Saturday, which means if it's a sunny Saturday afternoon, I'm going to want to be out on the balcony. So in the summer, we're probably still going to do mornings. Um, you know, again, depending on availability, um, the weather report 30 days in advance for where I live is a hundred percent not accurate. <laughs> There's no way I would base anything on whatever's, mm, 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 mm. um, but we'll see how it goes. Um, like I say, we'll, we'll still be getting together uh, once a month. So the next booking is for April 15th, uh, 9.30 to 12.30 at the Signal Hill Library. And the details for that, including the address, are in the notes section down below. Another reminder about the embroidery display at the, at the Downtown Calgary Library. I have not made it yet. So I have 11 days left to go. So hopefully I can get down there and, and see that display. It's on my to-do list for March. I do need to get down there. <laughs> like I say, I had a day specifically where it was going to occur until everything else on that day got moved and changed and it didn't. Anyway, I need to work really hard about getting that done in the month of March. It's only for the month of March. All right, we are an, at an hour and 13 minutes, so we're going to wrap this up. This is why it was going to be, we're just going to talk randomly um, so I hope everybody's doing well. As always, thinking of the people of the Ukraine, thinking of the people who are living in areas that have, been, have experienced um, earthquakes. So Turkey, Syria, Ecuador, um, that's, yeah. Uh, thinking of them as well. Um, as always, thinking about a lot of people these days. Um, but yeah, over a year in the year, anyway situation in the Ukraine I just I wish I knew what the solution was but anyway well the easy solution is it shouldn't have started in the first place but that's a different problem anywho with that I hope you're saying staying safe safety first safety first safety first last Saturday as I was getting ready to um, uh, go to stitching at the library I was getting out because I was going to run an errand before I got there, so I need to make sure I was getting out of the house, but I opened up the garage door and in the center of the driveway there's this sort of V of ice. And it's interesting because I came out and I could hear my the next door neighbor sort of chipping away in the driveway and I looked out and I went, oh, he's chipping away at things in the driveway. I'm like, I have the same problem. Anyway, so I spent a little bit of time. I almost fell. And in my head, I'm like going, you little crackpot lady, you go on about being safe and you're anyway. Came close, but I did not fall. So say, there are so many accidents at home. So many accidents at home. Safety first, safety first, safety first. I got it cleared off. There's, it's no longer an issue. So I've looked after it. It's all fine. I can walk down the driveway safely. 
So safety first. I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're staying healthy. And I hope you're finding time to do some stitching and that your stitching is bringing you enjoyment, contentment, peace of mind, mental relief, creativity, whatever you need it to be. I hope you're finding some time to do some stitching and I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.